everybody moving in? How's the sound? Can everybody hear me? Checking. There's some seats. Don't be shy. There's seats in the front row. Good evening, everybody. My name's Susie Galway. I'm the chair of the Newcastle Art Gallery Foundation. I'd just like to begin by acknowledging that we're meeting today on the traditional lands of the Awabakal and the Waramai people and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. So on behalf of the Foundation Board, um, welcome and thank you all so much to our Foundation members, artists, art lovers and special guests for being here tonight in this incredible space to celebrate our Newcastle Arts community and specifically the reimagining of Newcastle Art Gallery. So with the gallery now closed and construction underway, we honestly couldn't think of a better place to um, host this event and welcome Dr Nick Mitsevich back to Newcastle. Nick, as you all know, is the director of the um, National Gallery of Australia and the former director of Newcastle Art Gallery, so a very proud son of Newcastle forever. So we actually, the foundation actually nominated Nick for the City of Newcastle Keys to the City Ambassador Program, which he was awarded back in 2020. And we've been trying to organise this event ever since. We've been thwarted constantly by COVID. So a huge thank you for Nick for continuing to say yes every time we ask you. It's um, an absolute honour to have you here. Thank you for your unwavering support. Um, I'll introduce Nick and our panellists in a bit more detail shortly, but I also wanted to say a very warm welcome to our wonderful Newcastle Art Gallery Director, Loretta Morton, OAM, who is our cultural warrior for the arts in Newcastle. Uh, also a warm welcome to Professor Alex Zielinski, AO, the, v the Vice Chancellor of the University of Newcastle, and Olga Zielinski, lovely to have you here. And also to Matt Endicott, the Commissioner for the Lower Hunter and greater Newcastle and a long-term advocate for the gallery and for cultural um, progress in Newcastle. Welcome also and thank you to Suzanne and Peter Evans for donating the wonderful Symphonia wines that you're all enjoying this evening. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Braddon and the Creator Incubator team of artists for hosting us and congratulate them on creating this incredible space. There's 38 artists that are working here and I've just heard that um, this whole precinct is the largest artist spaces run space in Australia. So it is unbelievable to be here. So they had a really fabulous party last weekend celebrating their sixth birthday. Um, it was just wonderful. What you've achieved here in six years is absolutely incredible. So you really nurture and I think it just showcases the depth and breadth of the, of the creative community in Newcastle. The artistic talent, passion and commitment is just second to none. I think this place has always given me goosebumps. I think sort of Newcastle's uh, you know, artistic soul is sort of underneath this um, industrial facade. And I think there's no better sort of metaphor for that than this incredible building. You can see from this beautiful exhibition surrounding us and also in the adjacent um, gallery, the huge and rich diversity of expression and voice that we have in this town. These works are all actually part of the Creator Incubator fundraiser as well. So I really encourage if you can all find the QR code, have a look and support the artists by purchasing a work here tonight. That would be fabulous. Um, obviously, we're here to also to support the Newcastle Art Gallery and the expansion, but we're really all part of one big ecosystem and... Um, yeah, I think that's what this is all about tonight, is bringing everybody together. So the arts, of, or for better or worse, have always been inextricably linked with philanthropy and patronage. And I'd also like to acknowledge David um, Saddington, who's the owner of this building, for his foresight in helping realise Braddon's vision to create this space. <laughs> Newcastle in generally and the arts community and Newcastle broadly owe you a huge debt of grat gratitude to both of you for what you've created, this vibrant, important space. So thank you very much. So similarly, the Newcastle Art Gallery Foundation was born from a community wish to support and elevate our gallery beyond what can be done through um, government public funding. So it was founded just one year after the original gallery was opened by Queen Elizabeth in 1977. So the foundation's an independent charity and we have more than 300 members. We're volunteer run. Um, we have a much wider, obviously, network of supporters and donors that help us help the gallery achieve wonderful things. 
So in recent years, the focus for the foundation has been very much on advocating and fundraising for a fit for purpose and a fit for collection gallery. And that was really a campaign that we found out 20 years ago today was started by Nick and Kathy and John Tate. And they held their first fundraising dinner this time 20 years ago. So it's totally fitting that we have them all in the room. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, so, so none of this then through from that time would have been possible without extraordinary cultural leadership and um, fundraising over many years. And that's sort of passed the baton to subsequent directors and now we're finally at this point. We also would not be here as the foundation, I couldn't say, we, we would not be here, all of the fundraising that's happened without an incredible woman, Valerie Ryan. It was her generosity and vision um, and her transformational gift, Father Valerie and John Ryan bequest, that meant the foundation was able to increase its funding commitment to $10 million and then further commit to a further $3 million of fundraising for, this, um, for the expansion project. Uh, so that really was the catalyst for the city of Newcastle to be able to give this project the green light. And then fortunately, the state and federal government stepped forward with $5 million each. I think they could have done a bit better, but... So the project's now underway and it's um, on track for completion at the end of 2024. We've got the... Um, the collection has been moved, the mine um, grouting has happened, the tender's been awarded, so we're really about to get going. So we'll be delving into that a little bit shortly in our conversation. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our panellists. And I would, I know they probably need no introduction, but I would like to read their bios because they're three incredible people and we need to understand the detail of their past, of where they've come from. So Dr. Nick Mitsevich um, is the director of the National Gallery of Australia. Having been in the role at the National Gallery since July 2018, he's been focused on advancing First Nations engagement, ethical practices and advocacy for Australian art and gender equality in the arts. Nick led galleries in three states before becoming director of the National Gallery, including the Art Gallery of South Australia, 2010 to 2018, the University of Queensland Art Museum, 2007 to 2010, and the Newcastle Regional Art Gallery, 2001 to 2007. And he said he was only 29 when he took that role. Unbelievable. Uh, Dr Mitsevich has a strong connection to this... To Oh, in 2003, in partnership with the Lord Mayor, John Tate and Lady Mayoress Cathy Tate, they launched a campaign to expand the Newcastle Art Gallery. Dr Mitchevich has a strong connection to the city of Newcastle. He grew up on the family farm in the Hunter Valley with his parents and three sisters. His interest in art were developed by visits to the Maitland Regional Art Gallery. Nick studied at the University of Newcastle and as a result holds a Bachelor of Arts in Fine Art and graduate diplomas in Art Education and Fine Arts. Upon completing his degrees, Nick also lectured in art history at the School of Fine Art at the University of Newcastle. In 2021, Nick's work in advancing French, French culture was honoured with the... I rang my son today and said, can you give me some coaching in French? But he hasn't rung me back. <laughs> Chevalier de l'Ordre des Arts et des Lettres <laughs> Award from the French government. Yeah, sorry, Nick. In 2022, Nick was awarded an honorary doctorate of fine arts from the University of Newcastle in recognition of his commitment to the arts and culture in Australia. Welcome, Nick. Loretta Morton, OAM, Director of Newcastle Art Galleries, which I'm sure you all know. With over 35 years' experience in the visual arts and creative industry sector, Loretta is the first female director in Newcastle Art Gallery's 66-year history. That deserves crap. <laughs> Her directorship and artistic curatorial leadership has achieved the highest audience participation over a decade to award-winning nationally and internationally recognised exhibitions, securing record growth in benefaction and donations to the city of Newcastle's $126 million collection of over 7,000 works of art. Loretta is a highly respected arts advocate committed to supporting the broader gallery and museum profession through multiple industry boards, committees and mentorship. Loretta was awarded the Medal of the Order of Australia in the 2022 Australia Day Honours in recognition of her outstanding and meritorious service to the museums and gallery sector. Welcome, Loretta. <laughs> Dr. Braddon Snape. Dr. Braddon Snape is a nationally recognised artist who specialises in three-dimensional practice, including large-scale public artworks. Over the past 27 years, Braddon's developed a practice utilising a diverse range of media that now encompasses sculpture, installation, video and performance, earning him a reputation for conceptually rich works revealed through a minimal aesthetic and an astute understanding and sensitivity to materials, media and sight. 
Braden is a multi-award winning artist, most recently winning the Lake Prize in 2022 and was a finalist in the Blake Prize in 2022. He's had mul held multiple solo exhibitions with his gallery, Nanda Hobbs in Sydney, participated in Sculptures by the Sea and numerous exhibitions in regional galleries and internationally. He's also had a public artwork commission by the Maitland City Council for the Riverlink building in 2018, so many of you may have visited that. His work's been collected by Newcastle Art Gallery, Maitland Regional Art Gallery, the Mac Museum, Grafton Regional Gallery and private collections throughout Australia and abroad. Braddon accumulated over 20 years as a teacher of sculpture and installation at Newcastle Art School, the University of Newcastle and UNSW Art and Design, and he established the Creator Incubator in 2017. Welcome to Braddon. Okay, let's get started. So given this is, um, this is Newcastle and the zero degrees of separation, <laughs> I'd just really like to start by asking you all how you know each other and give us some, share some little details of, of your connections over the years. We promised that we, we've, we've been together this afternoon and I've been, we've been reminiscing on the really naughty, saucy things, so I thought... Um, I actually went to Nick for a reference back in 2002 because I was going for a job at Lake Macquarie. And uh, he said, what are you doing going there? I'm not writing you a reference. You need to come and work here. And so that was the start of it. And I came in as a casual art gallery assistant with Nick and had an amazing time through to 2006, 2007. We worked together and many amazing stories that I'm happy to share a little bit later. Uh, but no, it's, it's one, you know, over two decades of knowing Nick and, and we have a great friendship and, and mm. mutual respect and he's been an amazingly generous friend as well as mentor. Wonderful. And I think, Braddon, you two have a connection as well. Well, yeah, I mean, I, we, we, did, we studied at similar times. We didn't sort of cross paths too much in, in study times, but um, uh, Nick gave me my sort of first break into ha having an exhibition in a, in a regional gallery, actually. He, he came and visited. I'd finished studying and I'd finished my master's, actually. And I was working in my little single car garage in Mayfield and making these little things, working with plywood and making these little kind of model pieces because I didn't have much sort of equipment and um, resources at the time. But he came in with the, the sort of foresight to go, you should make that thing big, right? And, and so he gave me the opportunity to have a, a show at Newcastle Gallery in the project space um, to do a large kind of installation work with the plywood and so on that I was working with at the time. So for me, it was a great breakthrough thing and it, was, uh, it really it helped me so much because it, it gave me the opportunity to think beyond what I was doing in, on a small scale in the, in the studio and he had that foresight to, to encourage that and give me that opportunity. So I'm always thankful, forever thankful for that. And then not long after that, you know, I ended up part-time working at the gallery as well, which is, you know, working with, with both of these guys, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Do you have any reflections Yeah, um, I think um, one of the things that um, always I remind myself of Loretta is that she had this extraordinary attention to detail, and, um, and I think that's one of the things that a gallery needs. Like, I always think a gallery is like an operational, uh, an operation um, that, you know, when you're in a when you're in a hospital and you're undertaking an operation, everyone has all these acute jobs. And it's very important that those jobs are done with such great care and precision because you're dealing with lots of very important things, things that are valuable, people's reputations, people's expectations. And one of the things that I always remember, beside the fact that Loretta has a cheeky side, but besides that, she always had this extraordinary attention to detail that was like an operating theatre. And that's one of the things that I always remember, that everything would always be done with such acute attention to detail. And people don't think about that when it comes to the arts, but I always think the arts is a science. A gallery is like a lab. Um, and you have to have the precision of an operating theatre and the verboseness of an opera singer. And you bring them both together, and that's what makes a great gallery. And Loretta had that extraordinary attention to detail. And um, the thing that I most remember about Braddon is that he had a great modesty, but, and he continues to have that modesty, but the modesty is put aside when he focuses his attention to materials and form. And I remember walking into the little studio, which was a garage, and seeing these little tiny marquettes, and I could see the modesty at play, 
And um, when he releases that modesty with his materiality, that's what makes him t to be such a, um, a really important force and to kind of take on this um, building is something that's not modest. And I love <laughs> the interplay between the humble modesty and um, the great expression that one has with um, materials or place. So they're the two things that I'm always thinking about with um, Brad. So do you have anything that you'd like to share about your particular memories you'd like to share about your time as director of Newcastle Art Gallery? I loved working in Newcastle because it's, it's where I learnt my craft. It's where I learnt to um, be acutely politically um, attuned. And I have to thank John and Cathy Tate who are here. They were my great guides. And um, I wouldn't have been able to achieve the things I did without the guidance of Cathy and John. They're, so they're super clever and passionate about the arts. And um, we were a great team and um, we did lots of things. So um, I, I learnt that um, very clearly from them both. Um, and someone who isn't in the room, uh, the CEO of Newcastle City Council, she took a chance on me. I was the youngest candidate for the job. I was the candidate that had the least experience. And um, she said to me, you're a bit of a shit. But, um, but um, you, you're too cheeky for your own good. Because um, I said to her at the interview, is there any reason why you, you feel you've got any reservations for hiring me? And she said to me, she told me to be quiet and that I'd done a good interview and my cheekiness um, would be a negative. <laughs> um, but she said that um, she loved my ideas and she loved the fact that I, she thought that I could bring people with me. She said that I had no management experience and didn't know how to read a spreadsheet. But she said that's okay because she helped me manage people and she helped me read a spreadsheet. And um, she said to me, I need you to read a spreadsheet and I need you to deliver a budget that's um, uh, less than two, that, less, that has a 2% variance. And I need, to make, I need you to make sure all your procedures and policies are up to date. And I need you to make sure that you don't embarrass me or the council. And if you do that, you can do whatever you like. And there was one day that I wandered into her office and I said to her assistant, Christine, um, and uh, I said, Christine, I need to see Janet. And she said, why? I said, oh, because... She goes, no, she's too busy. And I said, oh, I just really need to speak to her because there might be something that might <coughs> embarrass her. And she goes, all right, come in. And I said, Janet... And she goes, what, do you, what, are you, what problem are you going to put on my desk today? And I said, ah, uh, this. And I just opened up this nude picture of me standing in the storeroom <laughs> of the gallery. And she said, that's disgusting. And she goes, and then she looks at me. She goes, oh, my God, what is your mother going to think of this? And I said, I'm not sure, but it's being published tomorrow morning in the Newcastle Morning Herald. <laughs> and she said, have you shown your mother this? And I went, no. She goes, are you going to show your mother this? And I went, no. She goes, are you okay with that? I said, yes. She said, mm, well, you're here to ask me for forgiveness and permission, aren't you? And I said, neither. I just want to make sure that you're not too embarrassed tomorrow morning. <laughs> and she just, and she said, if, if you're not worried about your mother, I'm not worried either. And the next morning, the Newcastle Herald published a nude picture of me standing in the storeroom. And you might wonder, why is there a nude picture of me standing in a storeroom? And, you know, ultimately, it's, you have to do what you have to do to get attention for the arts in Newcastle. <laughs> and you know what? I wasn't Andrew Johns. Um, and, I, I, and I didn't have the money of the Port Waratah Coal Services. So you had to do something. And so I stripped off my clothes. And I have to say, I did have a, a more boyish figure those days. <laughs> and I probably even had a six-pack then. Um, and now I have just a one-pack. Um, but these days I don't need a six pack, but maybe then I did need it. And I put it to use for the gallery. Um, and I suppose what I loved about Newcastle was that you could do things and people um, responded. And, um, you know, if it was this, there's so many stories about how donors were generous. You know, the extraordinary Anne von Berto, where we sat down and had cups of tea every Thursday. Or was it every Tuesday, Gail? I can't remember. <laughs> every Thursday we had cups of tea. And then um, she just casually said to me one day, oh, I'd like to give you anything that you want from my private collection. 
and those cups of tea delivered at the time like a three and a half million dollar donation. But they're probably like, it's probably a $20 million donation today or more. But it's just those moments of just absolute generosity and those moments of great care that the community had that I remember so fondly. And like silly things, like when we bought a Margaret Ollie painting, and I said, oh, Margaret, I'll just put that in the back of the car. And she goes, no, you won't. She said, I need to paint an extra lemon on it. You can't have it. And I said, Margaret, the painting's fine. We don't need an extra lemon. And she goes, who are you to tell me that I don't need an extra lemon? You will come back here in two weeks' time when I've painted an extra lemon and not before. And now there's a painting in the Newcastle collection with an extra lemon that I still think is not necess was not necessary. <laughs> but Margaret thought it was necessary. Um, and there were beautiful stories like that and or stories that I told the staff of the Newcastle Art Gallery the day that I went to see Bill Beaumont in Brisbane and he insisted that I carry a Rodin sculpture home on an aeroplane because he was worried that if I, if I didn't take it with me, that Ron Radford, who was then the director of the National Gallery, would take it the next day when he visited. So Bill made me take a Rodin sculpture as hand luggage back to Newcastle. Um, and, uh, and so there's lots of amazing stories, but ultimately I learnt my craft in Newcastle. It's, um, and the, the memories and the lessons that I learned here, I use every day managing the National Collection, overseeing the $7 billion art collection for you all. And it's a, it's, um, I don't say it's a great privilege because some days are pretty tough. I have a leaking roof, as many of you might know. But thank you, Jim. We got $120 million on, Mon on Tuesday night for the budget, so I was very, very excited about that. I, I look at it as an important responsibility because manage a, co a collection, being a custodian for the community is actually... It's a science and it's a great responsibility and um, that all came from learning the craft here in Newcastle. Fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think that... Susie, can I just add, sorry, I was the one balancing the frame on you when you were naked <laughs> and making sure that everything was tucked in. Um, <laughs> you do know each other just, rather. Just, just want to clarify that. Um, and... Um, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and Calvin Klein's were of the day. Um, but no, I remember holding the frame for you and you're like, Can every, like is everything tidy? <laughs> Some, a, a bit of my modesty may have been revealed. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, we're, we're very close and the rest of that story needs to stay yeah. unearthed. And thank, thank okay. goodness at the time, nothing was digital. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I remember signing disclaimers that were for print only. That's right. Uh, thank goodness. So. <laughs> That's right. Well, maybe on to safer but as important territory. Um, so a big question, I guess, for all of the panellists. Why do you think Newcastle Art Gallery is so important to this community? And I guess why regional galleries themselves are so important. So just interested to hear your views on that, why they're so important. Oh, well, I guess I would look at it from, from the artist's point of view. Uh, that would be my take, I guess, for tonight. And um, it's, it's necessary, you know, Nick talking about a breeding ground for his career, basically, and, a, and where, how he learnt his craft. And, um, you know, the artists here, for example, you know, are either learning their craft or, you know, consolidating their craft under these roofs. But um, they, need, they need that support and that encouragement and that sort of showcase that place of showcase for them to be able to present their work to a wider audience. And, I mean, thinking about the new development of the gallery, it, um, it's going to be, provide so much more opportunity for local artists to, to be shown in the gallery. So I think that's the, bit, the, the, the biggest bonus from, from the artist's point of view. And, of course, um, the, the gallery has such a great profile now, but, we, of course, it's going to be so much bigger and so for local artists to be showing in that kind of context and being seen by not just the wider audience of the region and, and, um, and the greater community who then get to understand, you know, what actually they have in Newcastle, which is really important um, thing to communicate because most of Newcastle doesn't really understand what they have. The people in this room do, um, but the wealth of, of talent in, in this place is, and this is a great example of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
so the people beyond that who, who can experience that and, and understand that, I think, is really important. I think regional galleries can be a bit courageous and a bit braver than the state institutions because we don't have that huge staffing, we don't have those programs that are really locked in with touring shows, et cetera, you know, three, four, five years ahead. So I think what, what you see in regional galleries is you can test things, you can experiment. They may not work, but you can always move and flex. So I think there's that agility with a regional gallery. Of course, we are so spoiled with our rich collection. So, you know, when, when we expand, we're going to be two and a half times bigger. And it's not what we've done, but bigger. It's completely reimagined. So the gallery I see, particularly with, with Matt here with the, the cultural master plan, we see the gallery as being an anchor point in the city and that it feeds out to everything. It feeds out to all our incredible artists. It feeds out to all of our institutions that are teaching the arts. It's really important for our community, of course, and with the community buy-in and, and supporting the expansion for so many years. But it's, it's a wonderful place of gathering. So we want to see it as a centre point. You, don't, you may not want to come and see art, but you might want to come in and have a drink on a Friday night. You might want to experience music. You might want to see something else happening. And so that's really exciting for us. It's about bringing it in to be a place of, of comfort, but also a place of maybe a bit of disturbance, a bit of discomfort. So I just, I'm really excited about what we are able to do with something so much bigger. And for people to come in and see the Whiteley, instead of when I pull it down after three months, they go, can I come and see the Whiteley? <laughs> you know, it's, it, these are going to be out on display. So I can't wait for that. And I think we are really, we do see ourselves as central to the hunter, not just Newcastle. Yeah. It's really important for us to be, you know, we share our collection with all of our, our galleries that are in our close proximity. So I think it's, it's very much about that. And, and I love the fact that our relationship with the National Gallery, you know, we, we, we share works. So I think in the art sector, and I'm, I'm digressing a little bit, but I think there is that generosity of sharing, sharing knowledge and sharing the art and the collection. But everything at Newcastle is about, and I can see many in the audience, our artists. It's at the centre of everything we do artist practice and showcasing that and further to Braddon, providing opportunities to lift up and to validate practice because it's a solitary thing when you're an artist and it's really important to get that critique and that feedback and to have that in a public gallery is so important. So, we're, you know, we're locally grounded and we're nationally engaged but we're also globally minded moving forward. I love that. Thank you. Give that a clap. <laughs> Nick, any you. reflections on the importance um, of Newcastle yeah. Gallery and regional galleries and their... I'm very fortunate that I do get to travel to lots of places. So, you know, a few weeks ago I was in um, Gove um, in um, Northern Territory and, and I was in Launceston a couple of weeks ago and, um, and before that I was in Adelaide. And w what always um, is so apparent is that galleries more so aren't just repositories for collections. Um, they're actually um, places that you let the community flex its community spirit and define uh, communities. And there's a great sense of community pride. So I think that's a really important point. Um, we used to have other places to share and experience community pride, but those places have become more polarised, um, like churches or town halls. Uh, places that are um, now kind, kind of partisan in views. But what I think is important about a gallery is that it is a place that um, community pride and um, uh, community aspirations can be flexed with a great sense of neutrality. Um, and what I love about travelling around the country is that you get a sense of a community spirit through their galleries. And one of the things that I think the gallery's redevelopment will do is let Newcastle express its um, extraordinary community pride and its um, values through the gallery and its collection. Because as well as the collection, there are extraordinary volunteers that contribute to it. I want to acknowledge um, a number of extraordinary volunteers that have been at the Newcastle Art Gallery for decades. And I love you all and um, so many of um, the volunteers have devoted not just a few hours or a few weeks, but decades. So that's a really great um, uh, focus. There's also great generosity uh, and um, generosity with donating to the collection or programs, um, artists um, uh, also contributing. 
and they become really important points to advance a city. And so through tourism or economics, um, a gallery can become a very important um, uh, place for that. And they're more dynamic than our traditional places that that might happen. And uh, so I, I've seen cities really thrive because, uh, because of all of those things. I think that's a perfect segue, Loretta, I think, to talk a bit, a bit about that in terms of the expanded gallery, there's the bricks and mortar, mm -hmm. and what that, it, what that will bring to Newcastle beyond the bricks and mortar, and I guess we've heard that it'll be two and a half times the size, we'll finally have, be, you'll be able to get a coffee there, you'll like be able to have lunch gallery. there, <laughs> um, wonderful loading docks, but I guess it's all of that, that what it brings in terms of as you, you know, we've, you've talked about before, it's not just a bigger gallery, it's, um, it's a different gallery, just it, if you can is. share some of those insights. But I mean, we obviously, we respect the legacy, that piece that's come through, and, and such a huge majority of our collection has been gifted to the city, and we're just the custodians. So, you know, we want the gallery to be something that we're planning for the next 20, 30 years, not for us now. It's not about me or my team now, it's about the future and the future generations. And I think the great thing about what we've planned is, you know, other than the basics that we're finally growing up, Nick, you know, we're going to have a coffee shop rather than saying, no, sorry, you need to go around the corner to Derby Street. Um, but it's about changing the focus of everything and having 13 gallery spaces instead of five that we currently have, being able to bring in international shows. And we've got a view that, you know, it's the last couple of years we're with Sodacia, our first international show that we did, and then Warra Warra, the first big First Nations show we did, you know, that proves that we can do it, we can be really ambitious. But I think, you know, it's really important for people to come to us. We want to be the gallery on the eastern seaboard that everyone's coming on the plane from Melbourne, from Tassie, from Lonnie and Hobart, but Brizzy, and they're coming to us. And it did happen with those two shows. We had people coming internationally to see those shows, which was amazing. And so I think we know we can do it, but imagine what we can do with that. And, and the great joy I've had is not just obviously working on this building expansion, but is expanding a professional team. So, and Nick got to meet, meet some of our new team today, and I apologise because I poached one of his staff, just wanted to say, from the National Gallery. Um, but they all want to come to Newcastle, and I think that's testament to the draw card. I mean, we've got people that have come from really big institutions in Brisbane, Canberra, you know, the National Gallery. You don't get bigger than that in this country. Uh, Melbourne, Ackart, they've come to Newcastle to be part of this new team. And that's really exciting. And I think, you know, the vision moving forward is just going to be so exciting for the future and for, for our community, but also for artists, really important. Our local artists are always so important to us. We can't do anything without them. And I just want to nod to Brad, and I've known Brad for over two decades, um, but I think we, we, we share just a bit of a, an insight. We share a love of sailing, and we kind of had to leave that to, to do our careers. So there's this little bit of poignant... Those conversations come up okay. They do. Yeah. We, we talk about, oh, getting on yachts and sailing. Um, but I think, you know, there's artists in this room, I can see. We're, we're flanked by incredible artists. that, And some of them work at the gallery too, which is amazing. We've got some of our volunteers that you mentioned, Nick. I think it's just a family. There's that, we still have that family feel, which is so important. And we couldn't do it without the support of everyone and the foundation, obviously. So, you know, it's incredible what we're building together. We're all doing it together. I was going to say something about that, uh, about the staff. I mean, talking about from an artist's point of view again, um, what's important, that, that ecosystem of the gallery network is that it provides employment for a lot of artists who are establishing their careers, who need that extra income. So most of the, most of the staff who work on installing exhibitions or you know, gallery guides and so on are actual artists who, uh, who need that extra income and, and the gallery provides that, uh, that support for them as well. And um, the other thing I was going to say was that the gallery is beyond the walls, right? Um, and more so now than ever, but obviously because there is no gallery at the moment. But, but the, 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 what the gallery means to, the, certainly for the art community, is that it, it, it reaches out beyond the walls, the bricks and mortar of the gallery uh, with public programs and so on. And um, for instance, last year we had an event here with the the YAG, which was the youth arts group as part of the gallery, and they had an event here. So that, that, that the, the institution reaching out into the community is really important. Uh, they do a wonderful job with that. I'm conscious that everyone will be starting to get hungry, so, but I did want to ask, um, so as I said <laughs> earlier, you know, 
the perfect <laughs> definitely <timing>. time for <laughs> dinner. Ding, ding, ding. Um, that the arts and philanthropy are very much linked. And I'm wondering what advice, Nick, I think from the National Gallery's perspective that you would give to the foundation in terms of nurturing mm -hmm. that culture mm -hmm. of, of philanthropy. Well, besides developing a collection, my, the favourite thing about the jo my job is to work with generous people. So I, I actually love philanthropy and it's, I love it because it opens the door to ambition. So um, money, this is my line and you can't steal it. And I've used it for 20 years. And some of you in the room have heard this line. So I'm sorry to repeat myself, but there's new people in the room. Money follows good ideas. And all you need is good ideas backed by one very important thing, confidence. And um, confidence comes from um, nurturing really positive relationships with people. And so my advice is really simple. Um, remember that philanthropy is not um, uh, something onerous. It's actually joyous because it opens the door to ambition. And um, you need good ideas and you need confidence and then people will follow. And it's that confidence that the foundation and its uh, wider family can nurture. And also, um, don't forget the volunteers. They need to be very much part of it and the gallery society. You know, all of the significant bequests that this gallery has received have come through modest gallery society members. And there's a number of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's many that you don't know about. Um, and the harnessing the gallery society is really important because it's um, that family that is the ecosystem to nurture confidence and you need to harness it. And I know all the ingredients are here because there's so many passionate people in the room. I would just like to give everyone their final word. Is there anything that you'd really like to say, Braddon? I guess on that philanthropy side of things, I mean, in relation to the incubator, um, one of the ideas of, of having this kind of open studio kind of space so that, and welcoming the community into, um, one of, one of the, the impetus for that was, was so that the community could come in and break down some of those mythologies and that, those barriers of what they think an artist is and what they do, particularly the wider community who think, you know, that an artist is just locked away behind closed doors uh, or, or, and they only get out to go to the cafe and drink coffee and, and do all that kind of thing. And, and having that kind of openness and encouraging the community to come in here um, to see how hard they work. These guys work furiously hard, and they have to, right? They've got other jobs. Most of them have got some other sort of form of income. They've got families. They've got all that, like we all do. But every spare moment is in here, you know, is, is making work. And, and, and to sort of break, break that open so people can um, understand that, to encourage that support, to encourage buying the work, um, providing opportunities for the artists. So that's that in that sense, that's what's important about this place, one of the important things about this place. Yeah. I, just, I guess I want to say thank you to Braddon because he's letting us use this basically as a satellite of the art gallery on, on many, and, and to all the many functions, <laughs> to the foundation and to our society, all our support groups and all the donors that are in the room particularly because it's, you know, you've come on this journey, it's been a very long journey with several iterations and um, to, two weeks ago to be able to see every councillor's hand go up in unison at the tender assessment panel and saying, yes, we award this tender for the building was just such a momentous moment for so many of us in this room and uh, to the point where, you know, we were all quite euphoric and it was quite funny because I was sitting next to our project manager that was trying to stay really stum and I was actually shaking his chair in the council meeting because I just couldn't believe that we got there. Um, but it's with the support of everyone in this room and what the foundation do and events like this that are just so wonderful to bring everyone together and, if, you know, we're all here because of the gallery. So thank you so much. And Nick's here because of the gallery. Braddon's doing this because of the gallery. So just that generosity is just incredible. And we couldn't do it without you all. So thank you. Fantastic. If I could just say a little bit about the collection, because the collection is quite extraordinary. 1957, when the collection was commenced, Gil Docking bought one of the first works from Fred Williams' show. There's amazing Albert Tuckers. There is this extraordinary strength of the 20th century in the collection that you may not have had the chance to see, as well as this very important colonial collection. You know, the license that 
this community hold are um, the most extraordinary testaments to um, the, um, the early days of white settlement, uh, but um, also plays to the wider picture of the Awabakal people here and um, what was here. And so these are very important cultural documents that can't ever be underestimated. Um, the 20th century is by far the strongest regional collection in the country. And Bendigo might want to have an arm wrestle with you, but it's good to have an arm wrestle with somebody. <laughs> but just remember that outside of the capital cities, um, the collection is this extraordinary um, asset that the, that the city is yet, has yet, since 1957, to um, really harness. Mm. And um, with the redevelopment of the building, I hope it will give the impetus for the city to actually realise this extraordinary asset that has been so undervalued outside of the gallery walls. And to date, um, my um, partner, who's a banker, would describe this as a lazy asset. Um, <laughs> it's sitting there. It hasn't lost value. You just need to put it to work. Yeah. And I hope that the gallery um, redevelopment also heralds the city valuing and leveraging one of its most important physical assets. I think that is a perfect note to end on. I'd like to say um, a huge thank you to our panellists. That was a fascinating conversation for where I am, so I hope you've all enjoyed it just as much. I can't let you quite go yet without talking a little bit about fundraising. I need to have the, fundraise, the fundraising. Um, that's why we're all here. So we're getting really close to our $13 million philanthropic goal. So just over one year, or actually exactly one year ago, we launched our campaign um, to raise the final $3 million of our $13 million goal. And Margaret Ollie, the wonderful Margaret Ollie from the grave, $500,000 from the Margaret Ollie Art Trust kicked off that project and now that fundraising project. And now we, are, we have just one million to go. We've raised a further 1.5. We've now just got one more million left to raise. So we're very close. And we actually have three financial years left to raise that. So really, with, there's so many incredible donors here already and advocates, and we thank you all so much for your contribution. But I did just want to reiterate, there is still that opportunity to be part of, part of this legacy project for the future and really ensuring we've got that, um, that fit for purpose, fit for collection building and fit for our community, the, the, build, the gallery that we, we deserve into the future. So... Um, Everything, you know, you will be recognised within the gallery for contributions over 10,000 and that can be given within over a three-year period. Um, obviously, for larger donations, we can look at um, tailored recognition at a, at, a, um, at a high level. So the other thing is, for any of you that are not foundation members, a really great way to become part of the philanthropic community is to become a member. So to do that, that is a $500 donation um, and then you can become really part of the foundation, part of these sorts of events. Um, and just really part of that community of people that love the gallery and want to see it um, achieving amazing things in our community. So once again, thank you to everyone for being here and thank you to our amazing panellists, to Symphonia Wines for our beautiful wines tonight. Um, a huge thank you to our Membership and Development Committee, to Georgie Plenty, Lisa Robinson, Gail Davies and Marty Ryan for really making this event happen along with the incredible Creator Incubator team, Braden, Cara, Marlene, all the resident artists for hosting us and welcoming us into your beautiful studios. Thank you so much. Um, and I wonder, we've got some wonderful volunteer servers tonight. So thank you. I think it's even Claire up the back. Thank you very much. Um, and just a reminder that as well as the incredible Creator Incubator auction that's on, um, so please bid on their work. We've also got two fabulous experiences that will raise funds towards the foundation, which is a personal tour of the National Gallery of Australia with Nick Mitsovich with morning or afternoon tea. Um, so bid up on that. And we also have a wonderful tour of the Creator Incubator for yourself and 10 friends as well with maybe some wine and cheese. We'll see how we go. So please bid <laughs> up on those. They're cheese. outside. So everyone enjoy um, some wonderful paella, getting together, talking about art, celebrating art. Have a wonderful night and thank you all so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.